Hi everyone, my name is Wilma Guggen and today we're going to talk about CSS for Textual. Here we have a Textual application. Textual is a Python framework for building applications within the terminal. Uh, here actually is this, this the application running in the terminal here. See so if I run python basic.py, um, we'll see that there are four IDs and these come from the onMount method. So we're mounting four widgets and here we assign them IDs and by default Textual will kind of stack them up uh, vertically. So each one consumes a quarter of the screen. So if you imagine the content of the widget uh, is around here. And we have basic.run. Um, here's where we associate the CSS file, basic.css. Here's our CSS file. There's nothing much in it at the moment. We also have watch CSS equals true. And what that'll do is it'll monitor the CSS file for changes. So every time we save it, it will update the uh, display accordingly. So we're going to go ahead and start modifying basic.css, see if we can turn this into something a bit more interesting. Just to demonstrate what's going on, I'm going to assign some colors. I'm going to text on blue to sidebar. Oh, sidebar's down here, and you see now it's on blue. Header. Let's make it green. Content. Cyan. Footer. Magenta. So this line here, this is a, I think we call this a declaration. Uh, we set the text attribute to on blue. On blue is a, a rich style. It can sign a number of attributes as well as color. For instance, I can set bold. Uh, if you look at the sidebar here, once I, once I save it, you should get bold text there. And of course you can do italic. So we've got italic text there. Okay, so we've got some color, but it's still not looking much like an interface. Um, each of our sections is appearing stacked on top of each other. Uh, we have a header, that's at the top, that's fine. Uh, we have a footer, which is obviously not at the bottom of the screen. We have a sidebar, which is not at the side of the screen. So the first thing we'll do is address that. We're going to create a new rule. App Chevron View. And what this says is the first view, which is the first child of app, which is the very first view. The view is the object which contains the entire interface. And in there, we're going to create a declaration called docs. And we're going to create one called side. And we're going to put the sidebar inside. And we're also going to tell it what portion of the screen to use, in this case, left. Save that and nothing changes because we need the sidebar to be dock side. Okay, uh, you'll see it's consuming the entire screen here, which is also not what we want from a sidebar. We want to give it a restricted width. So I'll set it to 30, which is 30 characters. There we go, so sidebar is on the left, which is nice. Um, header and footer are way too large. Um, they're consuming an equal amount of the screen. There's three of them, so it's at a third. Header, I want to set the height to set it to three. Yep. Footer, height three. Brilliant. So it's starting to look like an interface now. Um, Header, I think we should give it a border, heavy border. Let's see if that works. Yep, that gives it a nice border. Footer, um, rounded, is it rounded? Or round, no, there we go, round. Okay, so that's looking more like an interface. Um, Something I'd like to change is the fact that the sidebar is kind of pushing all the content to the right. What I really want is for that sidebar to um, be, appear on top of the content. So in that case, we can move it 
over the content and then hide it. Let me demonstrate that. I can do that by setting uh, the docs here. If I do slash one, that changes the layer <clears throat> and the default layer is zero. So if I change it to one, it'll put the dock on top of everything. So as you can see here, sidebar um, is overlaid on top of the rest of the interface, which is kind of what we want. But obviously it's no good if it constantly obscures the interface. We want it to appear and then disappear. Uh, by default, we don't want it to appear. There are a few ways which you could make uh, a widget not appear by default, but we're going to do offset-x negative 100% in the sidebar. Okay, that's made it disappear. Uh, the percentage is the percentage of the width um, of the sidebar. So it's moved it 100% to the left, which is off the screen, so it's invisible. I can set that to 50% just to show you so what's happened there, that's 50% to the left, 100% is invisible. Um, so I'm going to go back to the code uh, and show you this bound key. Uh, we bind the tab key to toggle underscore class. This is an action. This takes a CSS selector, in this case sidebar, and we toggle this class. So class here is a CSS term, it's a number of strings which are associated in this case with a widget that can be um, toggled on and off. So we can style active. Um, if I go to back to here, sidebar active, that creates a new rule which applies to sidebar if it has the class active. And if I do offset x0, save that, that means that when the active class is applied to sidebar, it'll override this value and make it 0 and hopefully make it visible. So if I press tab, there you go, sidebar is nice and visible and I can toggle it on and off like that. Now, the reason I set offset and not one of the other ways of making something invisible is because I want to add a transition. If I do transition offset 500 milliseconds in out cubic. Um, so this is saying we're going to transition the offset which was set here 500 milliseconds. The animation is going to take 500 milliseconds. We're going to use the in out cubic uh, easing function and what that'll do is instead of moving the animation smoothly it'll speed up and then slow down which makes it look more kind of uh, organic let's try that let's see what happens that looks nice fades in and out like that that's kind of cool okay um that's looking quite nice it's looking like an interface but the colors are a bit uh, a bit too primary for my, my liking. So I've picked out some colors here. I'm going to copy these over. Let's see the header. I'm going to set this color. There we go. Sidebar border. Okay, where's sidebar? Sidebar here, I'm going to give it a border. And this color. Um, oh, it is there. It's just it's on a very dark blue. Okay, so sidebar. I'm going to set these colors. Sidebar here. Okay, that's looking interesting. Uh, the content. There's content. Colors here, that should be white. Okay. Content border. Do we have we don't have a border? Border. Solid blah. Uh, footer border. Footer yellow. There's a footer. Okay, 
these are kind of nice colors. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I, f I find the way these borders are rendered, rendered uh, to be a bit, bit janky, something a little too old fashioned about it. I'm going to try some other styles. If I go to, I'll start with header. I'm going to, instead of heavy, I'm going to set H key. This puts the lines at the edges rather than sort of part of the way through the borders. And I think this looks much nicer. I'm going to do something similar for the sidebar. Where are we? Um, so I don't want the border to be all the way around. I just want to put it on the right. So I'm going to, instead of border, I'm going to set border right. And I'm going to make that outer. It's a different style. This puts a, a dark line on the outer edge. I'll show you what inner does. In, this is what inner does. This is what outer does. I think that looks quite nice. Um, for the content, I think we just need a border at the bottom. And I think that should be H key as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, there we go. And the footer, I don't think footer needs a border. Change that. Okay, there we go. I think that looks quite nice. Um, you can imagine in a real application, we'd have some kind of widget here, it might show you some code or some graphs, etc. Here, the sidebar, there might be a title at the top, might be some menu items, some sort of status control. Uh, the footer might have a number of keys to find, that kind of thing. But all this is defined in this CSS file here. Um, you'll notice that we haven't touched the, the Python code. So this allows us to iterate very quickly uh, over designs to create applications in the terminal that look, look really nice. Great, I think that was successful. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, follow me on Twitter. I'll put some links below if this is on YouTube. Thank you and bye-bye.